Have you heard about Anchor? It is a platform that makes podcasting so simple. It has the tools to edit and create a podcast from your phone or computer, and it distributes your podcast to everywhere where podcasts can be listened from Spotify to Apple. One of the coolest things is it is free 99. Yes, it is a completely free service and you can monetize your podcast too, all in one place. You can't beat that. I wish I had discovered the platform sooner. So to begin your podcast journey or continue a current podcast as I did, download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Welcome to another episode of The Key Lies Within. Yay! Here I share the inner workings of thoughts and experiences I have or am going through as a form of therapy and a creative outlet for self, as well as discovering those conscious and unconscious happenings in an effort to create awareness. Welcome back to season three of The Key Lies Within. So now I will be grouping my podcast into seasons, preferably of about 10 episodes where I focus on a specific theme. So this season theme is tone, and this is my first time doing this. So yeah, so stick around for tone-based dialogue about how I'm realizing the place that tone takes in my life as far as setting the tone, even the tone of my voice when I communicate, the tone that I bring into things that I do or not do. So everything is tone for the next 10 episodes. And I want you to stick around. And as usual, if you have uh, any um, thoughts about the topics that I'm bringing up, any ideals, anything you just want to share, feel free to email me at tklwpodcast at gmail.com. And I'm excited to hear what you have to say. You can even send, um, if you're listening through Anchor, or if you have an Anchor account, you can even send audio messages. And who knows, your audio message may end up on the next podcast. Thank you for always supporting, and here's the episode. Are you ready? Are you ready? Hi, I'm finally here with my 2020 reflection, and I just want to highlight the importance of reflection. You know, reflection allows us to look back at things and uh, have somewhat of a hindsight on how we can do better in certain situations, how we can uh, maybe capitalize more of our time and really know how to find resources in order to help us in certain things and just observing what kind of person we were and how we react and how we moved in different situations. So first thing first, I'm going to go through a list of changes that happened for me last year. And so one change that was for the entire world was uh, the COVID-19 pandemic and people having to either be unemployed, furloughed, or um, work in different uh, in, in work environments that look different. So for me, I was fortunate I wasn't furloughed and I was still compensated in the period where it had initially had its onset where, you know, most businesses were closing and um, and uh, actually being fortunate and still being compensated uh, even though I was off of work and actually... Being able to utilize that time to um, purchase a new home and get into my house, get settled, get some furniture, and um, before I actually had to go back to work. So, you know, that really worked out because I was already on schedule to purchase a house this year because December 2019, 
you know, I took my last trip because I like to travel. I went to San Francisco. And so I took my last trip and then I decided I was going to use January through March to save some extra money and also get my spending uh, in check so that it reflect that I was good with money once it came time to apply for a loan. And so I am a first time home buyer. And so I actually purchased my home um, four days before my 28th birthday. So that was really, really awesome. And um, I've, I've, I've just been able to learn how to find my independence and be able to operate in a way that feels good to me and, you know, bring in people when I want to and, you know, not really have to be in interaction with people on a daily basis, you know, you know, because it's different living home with my family. You know, we were a full family, uh, a father, a mother, a brother, a sister and a nephew, you know what I'm saying? So we had a uh, we had a pretty much full house. So, you know, it's different living in your family home because to some degree you 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 interact with your family. But, you know, living by yourself, you don't have to interact with anyone on a daily basis. You can choose to interact with people and especially, you know, it's not like I you know, is I this it's not like I brought a home and I already had a family, you know, with children and stuff. So that's been one beautiful thing that's come out of it. And I've really been blessed financially to actually uh, save some more money for like emergency funds and start really getting in a position to start investing uh, outside of my 401k and also... I've dived into entrepreneurship and, you know, filing all the paperwork for that and, you know, having a business materialize, even if it's not lucrative, is very exciting because I've never thought about entrepreneurship. I have been a person up until this year that has been completely okay working for somebody else um, and I never thought to be an entrepreneurship. Now, I always want to, I always had the the ideal to write a book and be an author. But, you know, necessarily being an author doesn't mean that you are a, a, a sole entrepreneurship. Because I can be working for somebody and be an author, you know what I'm saying? So, that was so exciting to get into entrepreneurship and, you know, utilize some of the massive information that's on the internet and things like that with people, you know, sharing things that you can make money for and helping, really helping people to find entrepreneurship and find like control of their money in a time where, you know, people are really dependent on federal and government aid, not aid, but like unemployment and assistance to really survive in this time that we in. And so another thing that happened this year, my grandfather passed, my last living grandparent. He was 84. He would have been, he passed like a month before his 85th birthday. And so, you know, that was really different. You know, granted, I didn't have a really, I didn't have a super close relationship with him, but I did know him, you know what I'm saying? And I had, a level of communication with him and, you know, seeing somebody that had been the healthiest adult I've ever known, you know, he was super active. He may have had some health problems, but no major health problems kind of things that just came up and he took care of, you know, like I said, the healthiest adult I know, like outside of my parents and well, my mom was pretty healthy. My daddy just has diabetes, but I'm saying like healthy overall, like, you know, minimal health problems, super, super active. He could, he can outwalk all of us and we are what quarter his age. He can outwalk us. 
he was very uh business savvy he was all about you know investing and leaving something for his children you know he he just he just was a very revered person and uh he had no signs of being ill you know and so uh once everything shut down for the pandemic and we I guess we and and it's like his health just declined like over two weeks and so you know I'm sure there was a lot that, you know, I wasn't privy to about anything or maybe most people, you know, my family didn't know either because I'm sure he kept some things private. But, you know, seeing him just go and, you know, the the biggest blessing was, you know, we all actually were able to see him before he passed because he because he he um he called for uh he called for all his children, his grandchildren to come see him the, the evening before he passed because he passed like the early morning the uh, next day. And, you know, we got around him and we prayed and because, you know, he he was a pastor and, you know, we didn't know anything. We we understood prayer and what that really meant. And so we got around him, we prayed, we prayed on him and, you know, he got to see all of us before he transitioned when we got to see him. And, you know, that was, you know, that was just something like mind blowing. Like you, you, it's just some people, even though, you know, the nature that one thing we all have a common is passing from this physical body. It's just some people that you just never imagine life with, or you just, you just in your mind just have the belief that they will live forever literally and you know that was that was that person and you know especially cuz he had uncles and 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 um uncles and aunts that lived into their late 90s early 100s and stuff so you know you just knew that at 84 we could we could at least have him another 15 years you know but you know that wasn't the Lord's will. And so um, that being an interesting time for my family. And then also um, me through all that actually building a better relationship with my dad. Because that was my dad's father. And so actually building a better relationship with him, you know being more intentional with checking on him cuz he's the per- he's the type of person that a lot of people, you know, just kind of and, and to include myself, you know, kind of think that they they always are right, so you know, you check on them less. It's like the strong people get checked on less and you would think I would have got that sooner because I'm like the person that people view as kind of like, oh, she always good kind of thing. And so you know, being more intentional with, you know, being present for him as, as a daughter, as somebody he can talk to, as somebody, he, you know, who understand him and things like that. And so that's been very, that I've, that's been a very beautiful thing to uh, have, a, to grow a better relationship with my dad. And, um, and just being, um, Oh, being able to actually do a little traveling through the pandemic, even though, oh my gosh, my nerves was like wrecked, but it was just, it was very fun. I went to Destin for the first time and seeing that beautiful Emerald water. Oh my gosh, it was just so beautiful. And of course it were all road trips because I have not been on an airplane since December of 2019. And so, uh, taking a road trip there, uh, trying Jamaican food for the first time there and oxtail and, uh, oxtail is so freaking good. Oh my gosh. And, um, um, just being with in that, on the sandy beach with that beautiful emerald water, despite my anxiety about people being around and being in Florida because, you know, Florida was very much operating like there was nothing happening, you know, 
but it was beautiful being able to stay in a hotel that was newly renovated so that knocked a big that added a big peace of mind about uh sanitation even though I sanitized myself you know and then also being able to go to Dallas um which Dallas was really fun I I like Dallas Dallas is a nice city seemed like there's a lot of opportunity um there so uh that was a really cool place to go to and um and um changing some um dietary stuff that uh I've been co- and changing some things that I eat so um and being more um shifting to living in the law of the Lord and reading the Bible more and being more in tune with him and asking for guidance, um, following his law and, you know, certain things that I don't eat anymore. I don't eat pork anymore. I don't eat seafood and stuff for fish. And, you know, I'm perfectly fine without it. And I'm actually really gearing up to go vegan and, you know, just minimize eating anything that lived as me because you know you have to think about the hormones and the things that that animal was going through before it was slaughtered you know and you know really not knowing the magnitude of being slaughtered how that affects them and how that is processed through their body and then we're in turn eating it and really want to get to a place where I'm forging my own food and and gardening and um planting my own food and uh I've been pretty much learning how to do that and kind of stay up on it cuz I've been killing a lot of things. I had plant some squash, some zucchini, I had some success with the flowers uh growing, but then I started slacking on my end and wasn't giving them what they needed. I have a a little lemon tree in my backyard that produced two lemons, but I'm sure it should be bigger and um, I need to do something to fertilize it. I have a grapefruit tree that has not produced any fruit, which I need to figure that out. And, um, and my only plants that have survived so far is the ones that need minimal, um, care my ivy plant which i need to water today and my aloe vera plant and um those are kind of they 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 don't need as much tlc as other plants and stuff so just trying to get to the place where i'm not killing life you know um uh just really a big part of my journey this year i'm saying the last year was realizing how um how attached I, I was in certain in our relationships and understanding really understanding how valuable I am and how valuable my voice is how valuable my intel is and just how awesome of a person I am and how I always need to operate at 100% me and set my boundaries and always gather my peace of mind and no matter what I'm doing. If I'm sitting in the house and I'm watching something that makes me uncomfortable and not have me at peace, I need to change it. It's just as small as that. And, you know, really doing some, I've been doing some real work since I was probably like 22, 23 and I'm 28 now, soon to be 29. Some real work and really understanding who I am subconsciously allowing that stuff to come up consciously so I can really deal with it and understand where it stems at and really tackle that so you know it has been a very beautiful journey and um you know really understanding better what I want to do professionally how I really want to help people and I'm realizing that it really is mental health based because it's just so natural for me because my purpose is to help people help themselves and you know mental health I find will be the 
best the best mode of that because I can create tools for people to really assess where things are coming from for them and really help them do things in more of a a practice a practice basis and not um medication basis. And so just a few things that are my intent. I still want to make a vision board. I seen um a vision board that Issa Rae made a while back. It was like a throwback one. But the way she did it is like she uh she did like three columns and she categorized each part of her life she wanted to work on and you know got all the newspaper clippings and stuff and put it together. I just like the aesthetics of it and I actually would like to frame it and um maybe put it over my bed and then even maybe put it like uh in my hallway or something like that just so you know my intent my intentions on myself is always in the midst, you know. And then always finding um uh, always find him a a better way to have a uh, a better relationship with money and not using it as just like uh not being in a consumer mindset but being in a more of an of an investor mindset and holding on to my dollar and putting a dollar in the uh pockets more so of people who look like me and just being super intentional of about what I'm doing with money and how I view money and um prioritizing myself and my my romantic relationship and my familial relationships and you know understanding that I don't have to be in contact with people that either don't make me feel good or don't make people I really love and cherish feel good because if you dog my my let's say if you if you got it out for my brother and we cool like you eventually will have it out for me because that that's 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 blood you know what I'm saying nothing comes between that and I never want to be feeding into somebody that's that's trying to cast uh spells or curses on people that I love that I ride for and they ride for me. So being more intentional in that uh wanting to get more connected spiritually and really get into the law of the Lord and understand the Bible and the parables and the lessons that comes with that and um and not being not falling for BS or, you know, accepting what people say at face value and always analyzing and working to understand really what is going on without uh over obsessing about it. Just being really a, a aware being and operating in the business of myself. As I am learning, a lot of people do. I'm not putting anyone before me no more in the sense of the capacity of disrupting my peace of mind because I think doing something for them is is more beneficial than my peace of mind. And so um and not being as connected to people as I thought I was, you know, and seeing, you know, that that's not always a bad thing. And so just those have been my biggest reflections and you know I constantly reflect in um trying to understand different things reflect why I do things a certain way why certain things make me feel a certain way in different scenarios and that is all I have so actually I am gearing up to do uh my next season on mental health and so um I'll be comprising of like my 
episodes list and and starting to work on that so I can be more consistent in and releasing podcasts because I know a lot of these revelations I'm having will be very beneficial for people out there and you know you don't have to pay for it you know what I'm saying I'm giving you the good for free <laughs> and so if you have any topics of mental health that you would like to hear me uh give my perspective on or my take on uh feel free to if you listen through anchor to leave a voice message if you're listening through apple Podcasts, you can leave a review on there and if you are listening through any other um platform to actually uh email me at tklwpodcast at gmail.com and we can get this dialogue started and as always i pray that this conversation finds you well and that you can use a piece a whole of this conversation to then bring uh, a, a reflective dialogue to yourself and to the people around you and start shifting our mindset from the majority Talk to you later. This is a test. This is a test.